So question number one, what has this p pandemic revealed about values in our society? Yeah, I think to me, one of the big things is just, you know, a prioritization of our values, you know, where that sort of lies. We see a ton of debates, like, especially now that op reopening is sort of slowly happening. It's sort of, you know, where are people's values that are conflicting? We see a lot of like financial aspects coming in to play a lot of, you know, um, just logistical barriers coming up. But then it's mm -hmm. like, I mean, that's the, that's where the question of ethics really comes in. It's like, are we focusing more on these sort of financial barriers or lives and like what the value of lives are? And, you know, tons of arguments about, you know, well, at what point do we sort of stop saving lives in order to protect the country from financial instability and things like that. And uh -huh. it's just, I, it's a lot of those prioritizations seem sort of faulty to me, especially when it comes to a lot of the economic arguments. And I mean, they're definitely valid. Like I understand where people are coming from, you know, people are afraid to lose their businesses, lose these means yeah. of income. But like at the same time, I don't know how you can equate those sort of losses with the loss of a life or the loss of a loved one. Um, and I think those sort of contextual things aren't taken into consideration a lot of the times, yeah. especially when it's become such a politicized issue, um, when it really, I think, should remain a more human one. And definitely, I think this is just a very, it's obviously an awful circumstance, but like a clear instance where ethics just is in everyone's face all the time. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, just to, uh, to, 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 to clarify what you're saying, I'm, I'm guessing you're taking the side in terms of like life or lives saved should be uh, emphasized over fixing the economy, right? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think it's a, it's a little harder to like just pick one total side there. Like, <laughs> as I, said, I agree. Like, yeah, like I, I think there are points obviously to be made, to be made for both. Um, but I think there are certain compromises that can be made that are going to be more beneficial to people. I mean, Obviously, some people refuse to wear a mask, want things just completely to reopen. I think that's just not not practical. It's, it doesn't value people's lives, doesn't value um, uh -huh. the things we should be valuing as a society. But that doesn't mean, you know, I think everyone should be under an entire lockdown over escalating things. I think, you know, doing something gradually, but doing it safely and something that's based on, you know, maxim not maximizing. I'm not, I don't want to use like any utilitarian calculus or anything, <laughs> but like, I think, you know, keeping those values in mind, we should, you know, be sort of as sort of California has been trying to do, like base it on science, but also make sure it's gradually reopening, giving small businesses a chance to sort of stay afloat while also understanding the gravity of the situation. So, I mean, I think like doing things correctly and slowly are going to be, it's like the best compromise there. Um, and it's obviously, it's not ideal, but it's better than either extreme. Great. Thank you. Uh, question number two, what does the pandemic reveal to your own values? Yeah, um, I think it, it's been interesting in terms of my own values of trying to look at that debate while also put myself, my own context into it. It's, you know, all right, do I, do you go see friends? Do you try and do anything? Like what, what is your sort of role as a person in this? And just sort of trying to like stick to my own word here, because I mean, I, you know, when it came out, my first thought is like thinking of it like a social contract, like everyone has to give up something to get something in return. And like, mm -hmm. it's a very basic idea that everyone's familiar with, but putting it into practice is where it becomes difficult. Like we're all in this social contract, like what role am I playing? Um, and so like, just trying to keep myself accountable in that sense of, you know, making sure I'm taking the right precautions. And obviously things get kind of stir crazy after a while. And like, you want to be, be able to go do things, but it's just, you know, valuing you know my like integrity i think at this point is a big one where it's you know are yeah. you are you able to actually sacrifice and do the things you say are valuable like and i think that that's a big thing that um it's it's testing a lot of people right now um and i think yeah. it just it sort of helped sort of validate i think that sort of communal effort or idea of like a social contract that like we're all on this together and i think for me it's obviously we see a lot of people protesting and doing things that aren't great but Overall, I think we see a lot of like communal efforts that are really just sort of admirable and sort of make you feel a little better like you're a part of something bigger um, for the most part. I mean, obviously it's not perfect. Right. Yeah. yeah, I hear you. And then the last question is 50 years from now, uh, what would you want people to remember about these times? Yeah, I think 
it, it's really hard. I think that's a, that's a question that's interesting because I mean, we, we see the way they talk about like influenza and like all these other different flus that have come out, like, especially mm -hmm. now they're like, Oh, we saw those things. And they're sort of like glancing over them. This is a time period where a bunch of people died, but we figured it out. And I think rather than look at this time as like a, a lot of people died, we figured it out. It's a, what, what are the implications of that? What came out of it? And was there any actual change that came out of it? I mean, a lot of, you know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, how stimulus checks are happening and how universal basic income and things like that are questions that are more in people's faces because of this. Yeah. And I think the best thing to take away out of this from 50 years is not, you know, what happened right now, but what came out of it. And like just the communities that were built and that were strengthened behind it and the communities yeah. that needed rebuilding. I think those are the sort of things that ought to be focused on and just, I think are going to be the most beneficial to look at in just a positive standpoint in society and also an evaluative standpoint. If not, if no change comes out of it, then what was the point of all the sacrifice and all of this work together? I mean, it seems like, yeah. um, so I'm hoping that 50 years from now we can look back and say that there was a problem and we overcame it and hopefully made some changes um, just to our societal structures that are going to benefit more people.